Now we're going to do another compound proposition with P, Q, and R. And uh, here's the compound proposition P and Q, or not R. So <clears throat> I already have, as I usually do, the back, you know, the, the skeleton of my table, right? The structure of my table. I already put in the possible truth values in the normal way. So I do two, I half true, half false in the first one, first column. And then I, I take that in half. So instead of four true and four false, I do two true, two false, two, two, that's tough to say. Two false, two true, two false. And I do that again, true, false, cut it in half again. Instead of two, it'll be one before you switch. True, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Now it makes it easy for me to grade. And pretty much everybody in the world does it this way. Um, now a lot of students are confused about how I know I'm gonna have eight. Uh, well, the answer to that is because I have three individual propositions that have a possible truth value of either true or false. And so I'm going to use, under useful stuff over here, uh, the fundamental accounting principle to prove that to you. So for P, the number of possibilities are two, either true or false. So I have two possibilities for P, two possibilities for Q, two possibilities for R. And I multiply those together using the fundamental accounting principle and I get eight. Um, so that's how I know to start out with eight. Okay, so our first component of this ugly thing is a not R, that's pretty easy uh, because here I have R, all I have to do is negate all of the truth values in the R column. So true becomes false, false becomes true. It's pretty easy to do. Now I wanna find the value for uh, P and Q based on these original truth values. And it turns out that P and Q is true only when P and Q are true individually. That kind of makes sense, right? So I'm gonna go over here and see what, what, what are the cases where P and Q are both true. Well, that's one of the cases right there. That the second row is another case. But here, in every other row, I don't have two trues. I have either like here, true, false, here, false, true, and here I have false, false. So everybody else in this column is false. Now we're already to the last one, which is the whole point. We want to find the, the truth value of, of this particular compound proposition based on the truth values of P, Q, and R over here. So look, I have it nicely set up. I have one part of it here. That's the first part, this blob right here. All the truth values and I have not R right here. So I just can compare right next to each other um, and get the truth value of this guy or this guy. So what does that mean? Uh, how do I figure that out? Well, if I have P or Q, it's false only when P and Q are both false. So let's use that. Here, where, where do I have P and Q false? Where do I have this guy and this guy false? Oh, there, there I have it, right there. Oh, there, there it is. Okay, so that's gonna be, that's gonna be false here here. Oh look, this guy and this guy, right? I've almost, almost missed it. That guy's going to be false. True, false. Oh, these two guys are false. So A or B has got to be false. That, what does that mean? That means every other row here is true. So I can fill in this last column with trues. And there I have it. I've constructed a truth table for a compound proposition with P, Q, and R.